Amen. 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 Thank God for being back in our house in time of worship this morning. We praise God for all that he's done by allowing us to yet come again and be a part of this worship experience together with one another. Um, however you are joining us this morning, we're grateful to have you with us this morning. Hold one second, everyone. Hold one second. I've got an issue. I have an issue. Hold on. Okay. Now, so we're going to begin with our call to worship. Our call to worship this morning will be coming out of Psalm 100. And it says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. For that right there, make a joyful noise. I feel like praising the Lord this morning. I hope you all do too. And I don't know whatever you your last week was, but it was just that last week. It was in, it's in the past now. So we're living in the present. So we thank God for this present time where we're in and how we are going to give him glory for all of his goodness right now this morning. So at this time, we're going to move to uh, our musical selections from Brother Tommy. Then we'll come back with our scripture and our prayer in that order. the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent that means God will not or absolutely not change God is God and he won't change oh God is God in here. the 
Minister Betty Mosley, and our prayer from Reverend Joanne Fields. Minister Mosley will be reading from the NIV, I do believe. So let's move forward on to our next things. Um, yes, the scripture reading is Luke chapter 4, beginning with the first verse going through the 13th verse. That's Luke chapter 4. Verses 1 through 13. I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. The temptation of Jesus. Listen for the word of the Lord. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. Where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days. And when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, it is written, when does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, to you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands, they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The word of God, thanks be to God. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Oh, heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. For this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we just thank you for you are the creator of this universe, Lord. Lord, there is nothing new under the sun. And Father, I thank you, Father, as we go into the service this morning, Father, we thank that the Holy Spirit will have his way. We thank you, Father God, that no matter what we see or hear, there will be wars and rumors of war, Father, but you are still in control. And Lord, we just want to thank you, Father, for Lord, for being there for us, Lord, for you said you would never leave us nor forsake us, Lord. And Father, now I want to lift up the body of Christ to you, Father God. In such a time as this, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that your people will stand in faith and confident in you, Father. And Father, I pray, Lord God, for our uh, church family, Lord God, and not only our family, but for all church, Lord God, that they will be led by the Holy Spirit, Lord God, and realize, Father, that you are in control, and you, Lord God, are the pastor of the Father of God. God. And I thank you, Father. And Father, I just want to pray, Lord God, for our pastor and the family, Lord yes, God, yes. as you continue, Lord, to use them in a matter of way, Father. And not for again, Lord God, I just pray, Lord God, to look upon. Man. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank you, uh, Minister Mose and uh, Reverend Fields. Thank you so very much for uh, Brother Tommy, for the music and, and ladies for our scripture and our prayer. We praise God for that. I want to say that now is our time of giving for we, we come to the place where in the service we're able to give into the ministry um, so that the ministry continues to, to go without a hitch. And, and the Bible tells us that, that God loves a cheerful giver. 
whether you're giving up your, your talents and gifts that you have, whether it be musically inclined or missionary, missional inclined or monetary inclined, he loves a cheerful giver. So I say, as we say when we're in the church house, give with a smile. Go online to our website, www.ucfmbc.com. Go to the Give tab where you'll find Tidely. You're able to give there. You're also able to mail in the postal system to United Christian Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church. P.O. Box 2142, Oxford NC 27565. And you all that know our financial clerk know what to do with that. So we thank you in your giving. Father God, we thank you for those that have a heart to give God and for those that have a heart to give, but for some reason are, are financially having issues. But God, we ask you to just bless your people even still, God, whatever the desires are that they have in giving toward ministry, God, as we will be able to meet our obligations, God. You, you've done more than enough for us, God. You've miraculously done things that we couldn't even imagine, God. You've done things that we talked about, and then you came and, and, and made it come to fruition, and we're grateful for that, God. We ask you to just bless those households represented, God. We thank you for the tithers. We thank you for the benevolent givers. We thank you for those that are supporting this ministry through their financial obligation. We ask you to bless it, God. Increase it as you always does, for it's in Jesus' name that I pray, amen, amen. Uh, Brother Tommy will come back with a musical selection, and then we'll go into our morning message, amen.
I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. Yeah, when I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. I can't sing. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. Sing it. Glory, hallelujah. He lifted me. Thank you. I, I just said this this pollen that we don't see a lot of is out there because it's got my throat. Y'all know I'm not a singer anyway. Then we got the pollen that's all around. So that's really messing me up. But I just know that I know that I know when I was in trouble, he lifted me. And I know that God knows we all know that when we've had times of difficulty, who brought us through? And we just got to give him the praise. I want to tell y'all this morning, church. I'm happy to be here. I'm glad you're there. I want you all to know that what I what I like for you to do during the, the mess, because we get ready to go back into the to the actual building out there on Salem Road. Uh, but we'll talk about it later. But what I want you to do during the service, if you're getting a word, just throw your hand up. You can physically throw your hand up or you can throw a hand up on the screen. I need some amen and some push me on sometime. Help me be encouraged to keep on doing what I have to do to uh, part this word to you guys. So as you heard, yeah. we are coming from the book of Luke chapter four uh, and the verses are quite long, but y'all we're in the season of getting, we're in the lit season preparing to get ready for Resurrection Sunday, Easter. So we we, we got to do what we got to do. Yeah. And I can't cut God's word because somebody's time is on a time constraint. If you're on a time constraint, do what you got to do because I got to do what I got to do. Thus says the Lord. Amen? Amen. So now Luke chapter one, uh, ch excuse me, chapter four, begin at verse one. And I'll be reading from the NIV. I will look at my Bible because sometimes I can't see everything on the screen because of the tabs on the side. So I read from my Bible. Jesus, uh, Luke chapter four, verse one, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days. And at the end of them, he was hungry. Verse three, the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. He said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me and I can give it to anyone and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hand so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. <laughs> Let me pray right here because I'm ready to talk now. <laughs> Father God, I thank you for another opportunity, God, to come before your people, God. Oh, God, excited about this word today, God. I'm just excited, Lord. I pray, God, that the hearers of this word, God, will not just hear, God, but will understand, God, that you will speak by way of the Holy Spirit to give clarity and understanding, God, about what this word says and what it speaks to us this morning. For it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Y'all, for a topic today, I'm going to say, remember the desert times. Remember the desert times. And, and, and even for us, you, 
I'm going to go even further to say, remember your desert times. Don't, don't look, don't try to remember mine now. See, that's where we get in trouble. I want you to remember your desert times because we've all have had some desert times in our lives. So, so Jesus was, was now being led up by the spirit, the spirit of God and, and, and to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And after fasting for those 40 days and 40 nights, he, he, he was hungry. And as we be, we hungry, uh, we go all day. And so the tempter came and said to him, I will give you all of this. If, and you just command this stone to be bread. That's what he told him. But Mark, the book of Mark, chapter one, verse 12 and 13, it, it reads it this way. It says, the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, that being the spirit of God. And he was in the wilderness 40 days, 40 nights, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals and the angels were ministering to him. So now, aren't we among the wild animals, y'all? We're not in the deadness, desert, but we are amongst the wild animals in this earth. But but I want to go back to the scripture text because what I want you to get when I read verse um, when I read the verses and you look at verse three, the devil said to him, "If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread." And Jesus answered, "It is written." Listen to how clever the enemy gets as we go on. Go down to verse eight. Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And so then the enemy comes in and verse nine, the devil led him to Jerusalem. Okay, we said, well, why is Jesus allowing the devil to lead him? Because I know somebody thinking that, right? Mm -hmm. God was allowing his son to prepare for his Yet to come, persecution, false trial, everything leading to his death and his hanging on the cross. So he had to be tempted as we are to get to his place in God. So now, so, so the spirit of the devil, not a man walking around saying, come on, Jesus, but you got to think in a, in a biblical term, you got to think in a spiritual term of how this comes together. The devil talking the spirit talking you know how sometimes you you things are talking to you and it's not of god yeah. same thing here mm -hmm. so now telling him all what he could have and pointing out to him so then he leads him to jerusalem and, and jesus is walking just walking and, and had him to stand on the highest point of that temple and, and if you are the son of god he said throw yourself down from here now this in verse 10 is what the enemy says for it is written Y'all hear what I'm saying? For it is written, the devil is turning around using Jesus' words to try to tempt him to fall for the prey, to be his prey. So, so he said, I will command his angels concerning you. He's telling Jesus that I'm going to tell the angels, don't let him be harmed. Right. If when he will fall down, his foot won't hit a stone. You're going to be protected. You see how clever the enemy is. Yeah. But see, Jesus being Jesus, in verse 12, he says, it is said, mm -hmm. do not put the Lord your God to the test. So he realized Jesus will already see what the enemy is trying to do, as yeah. in to trick him. Y'all, well, we live in a world amongst enemies and strangers on. all the time. Mm -hmm. But are we allowing the spirit of the living God mm -hmm. to talk to us? Or are we listening to the negative forces called the enemy? Come on now. So now we are celebrating the blessings God has given us. And, but what we also need to cherish when God walks with us through some times, y'all, mm -hmm. some, some to, to horrible times that we've had in our lives, some trials and some challenges that we didn't see our way through. They were so painful that we didn't know if it would be a tomorrow or next month or next year because it was coming so hard and so fast. We just wanted to lay down, pull the covers over and give up. God knows I've been into some of those desert times. Well, so in a desert of pain and experiences, God, grace and love are like water in a dry land. Y'all heard what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, sometimes when you're going through that test and that trial, it's like, 
can I just get a little relief? God, can you just have a little mercy? Can you just let this thing calm down so that I can get through this challenge, God? Well, well, so now I believe people should be able to experience the love of God in us and see the love of God in us to realize that 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 when I see them going through their trial, that their, their desert times that. But I see the waters are refreshing in their life that they become encouraged just by watching you go through your desert. Mm, okay. Can people count on us in their desert times? Mm. Mm. Think about during this past week, what you what you've been through, what you've seen, and what you've heard. Was anybody able to get through their desert time because you were like a drink of thirst or water when they were thirsty? Think about it. There is nothing like starting life on a high note. It's nothing like being on a high note because everything's clicking and ticking right then. It's like, no worries, y'all. Everything, everything is going. You know, dog barking, the cat meow, and the children acting right. Everything is checking off good. Yeah, well. But then in both of our scripture reading, that, that's where we are. First, we have Jesus just having been baptized and affirmed to the public to start his public ministry. By who? None other than God. God sent him on this mission. This was his role to prepare to be, they were preparing him to be the great Messiah. They didn't understand that Jesus had a greater purpose in earth other than a Messiah just to the Jews. Well, it was for the whole world. See, right. we were grafted in. So now right. it's, it's for everybody. Okay. And so, so they were feeling good about everything. And, and so in, in Deuteronomy, the story tells us about the Israelites uh, going to the land of promise, right? Mm -hmm. and, and all that they went through, y'all know that they traveled for 40 years. They were right there at the promised land, but because of disobedience and Moses, who who wasn't uns was uh, unsure about what he was doing some of the time, they circled. Let me tell you how that <clears throat> we live in Granville County. We have Durham County, our neighboring county. We have Vance County. We have Franklin County. We have Person County. So so now here we are traveling around these counties for forty years, and the promised land is right here in the center. But because of how we are and who we are looking to, which is self, to get through, we keep traveling around this same little track for 40 years. <laughs> they had some desert times. There were times when they were not sure. They were hungry. Oh, yeah. But see, God made to Abraham, what he made to Abraham was about to come true. They, they've got to get to a place of understanding that it's God doing it and not them. God working through Moses to get them to the promised land, the land of promise. But see, it wasn't it wasn't a place where they could see with their physical eyes, but they were to see with their spiritual eyes and their heart for their trust in God, that they will remember when they got to the land of promise from whence they came, mm -hmm. that they will remember that when they were out there, not sure where food was going to come from, that God provided manna from heaven every day that they would have food, hallelujah, that they would eat and not be hungry, that they, all they had to do was what he said, but they couldn't pack food and save it for later because it was spoiled. It was sent from heaven. Y'all got to remember the time that you went through. So now, Sometimes our momentum is unstoppable. Y'all know, like I said, everything's going good. So you feel unstoppable. You feel like I can do anything. I, I, can, I can conquer the world. I can do everything that I have on my to-do list, everything that I have on my little board, my, uh, I forget what you call the board that you're working on for your yearly goals. Uh, you can do anything because the scripture tells us in Philippians, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens. So we feel that we can do it. You know, uh, maybe it's, uh, I'm finally going to graduate. I can do it. I finally got this job. Hallelujah. And I finally got this promotion. I can do it. I finally got some opportunities that's been missed coming my way. I finally going to get that bump in my pay. I'm finally going to have this baby that I've been trying to have for many years. And I'm not talking about me. And I'm finally going to get to move in or move out of whatever the situation is. We finally get to this place where we can do everything.
everything that we desire to do. Then what? The shoe drops. Oh yeah. So to speak, the shoe drops. And we got all these obstacles, mm -hmm. all these flags on the playground of life. And we can't get to the next station because of the difficulties. So, so now I got to remember the desert times that I've been through. And when I got to that time of everything was going my way, well, that God brought me from the desert times to get yeah. me to where everything was going my way, right. that, that he has another plan that he's going to catapult me into something else yeah. greater than where I am right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so, so then, the, the, then the, when Jesus is going through his challenge, it has to be a time in his mind, in his perception that he probably even questioned his own identity and the mission that God had him on. In other words, how, what kind of Messiah am I going to be? And I'm out here on, on the mountainside being tempted of the devil. The devil's talking to me, but what am I going to be? All he could keep on remembering was it is written. Well, it is written. When you come up against things in life, sometimes you just need to say, it is written that God will not leave me, nor will he forsake me, because it is written. Hallelujah. Yeah. A time of remembrance for us. Remember your desert times. Uh -huh. Remember that God made promises in the days of old, in the Old Testament, but God also made promises in the New Testament. God also still making promises right now, today, where we are, that, hallelujah, if we live according to his word, yeah. keep his promises. Yeah. He keeps his promises, yeah. but we keep the word of God in us, hallelujah, yeah. and remember our desert times, yeah. that when we are going through, that is the time that we become even stronger because we're going on the strength of God and not our own. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. It's been some dark nights, y'all. Yeah. It's been some days where the sun was high in the sky. It was nine degrees outside, but it seemed like it was midnight for some of us. Oh, God. Uh -huh. We had a front row seat to uh -huh. everything that was good. We had front row seats in yeah. VIP section, just like last night uh -huh. at that game. Y'all, I know y'all know what I'm talking about. That game where they had good old seats, VIP, $7,000 seat. No, $79,000 was the highest seat in the house. They had some good places, but my thing is this. Do they remember their desert times? Uh, Do they remember the times when they couldn't afford a $79 seat? Do right. they remember that everything that, that comes in life that's good, that there's a price to pay? Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, God. Thank you, God. Uh, Do they remember that there are times of refreshing that, that you can spend $79,000? i am off track. Did you spend $79,000 on the ticket? But there's people that are hungry. It's 79,000 people that don't know where their next meal is coming from. It's 79,000 people that need to go to the doctor, but they don't have insurance. They don't have money. Hallelujah. Can they remember their times of death? Hallelujah. Mm. They also had front row seats. Manna, quail fed to them. Ah, there you go. God in his infinite ways of doing Work things. Huh? He even made water come from rocks. He Work even sent the now. prophet Elijah out and showed him a brook by way of spirit that he wouldn't starve in the desert. Even sent him food by a raven. Hallelujah. Even if we'd have had just a little... She said, all I got is a little meal and a little cruise of oil because me and my son, I'm going to make a cake and we're going to lay down and die. But because a prophet had come into the house and spoke the word of God, hallelujah, uh, she, didn't, she didn't die, the son didn't die. They lived on through the famine, but I know she remembered her desert too, hallelujah, her desert times. Yes. God, yes. thank you, God. He remembered. God, Jesus remembered. He said, it is well. Well. With my soul in his mind now, but then he kept dealing with it is written, it is written. He didn't forget what the father had said and the promise that he made. See, see, we forget what the father said. You know why we forget? Because we don't read his word. Well, we don't study his word. Well, Some don't even know if there is a word. Well, I'm not talking about y'all, I'm just talking about who I'm talking about. Well, but I want to tell you this: you need to remember the times of your storm so that you can. Rely on the word of God and the things of Christ to take you to the next level of your, your spiritual formation, that you will grow in the things of Christ. Because, see, Jesus came here to do what he done. 
Now we are here to do what we need to do according to the gospel of Christ. We got to do things that are not because of what we want to be, but because of the will of God in our lives. That's right. Oh, he's going to give us favor. That's right. Too much is given, church. Much is required. What is the given part? He's given us grace mm. and he's given us mercy. Well, oh, Lord, we need to remember our death yeah. time. It's a way to, to kind of bake in and remember. Uh -huh. You know, when you're out on the desert, I, I praise God that I did get to go through the desert. When uh -huh. we went out to California and we went to, to uh, Las Vegas, we had that ride around in the desert in the Grand Canyon. Oh, it's dry. Be out there on a 90 and 100 degree day with no water. Mm -hmm. you, you really want to drink a water. You probably even drink water sitting around in old glasses, just been sitting there because you're so dry and you're so thirsty. And you remember when you were back home with a refrigerator, you just pushed the button and you could get water at a time. But see, you remember your good times when you're in your desert times. You remember that I got water at home. Why am I out here in the desert running around and, and don't have any water? But see, I tell you this, you have to remember so you don't forget. Well, you know what I'm saying? People have a tendency to forget. We want to forget the bad things that we've done. Uh -huh. I know y'all do. Y'all done some stuff that only God knew about, and I pray he the only one ever knew about it. Well, but see, uh -huh. we want to forget those things. Go on, girl. The scripture says, forgetting those things that are behind us and pressing to the high call of the uh -huh. Lord. But see, I, I say this to say that, to say this here is that we can forget foolishness and move on into the righteousness. But when we've had a God that's been so plenteous and so graceful and so merciful, we better not ever forget it because those are the things that's going to get us through the next. Let me tell you something. The very last, let me see. Verse 13 says, when the devil had finished all this tempting. Right. Oh, glory, glory. Right. He left him until an opportune time. What does no, that mean? He came back again. Back. Let me tell y'all. Y'all yeah. good old saints on there that living so yeah. good and you think you're so good. Guess yeah. what? He coming back. back. He leaving you for a little while. Again. He coming back. Uh. He'll come to you in your sleep. Hallelujah. Yeah. And uh. plant a thought there uh. that has nothing to oh, do yeah. with God has yeah. nothing to do with work, yeah. has nothing to do with being loving, kind to people. He'll sow that seed mm. of discord, mm. and you'll get up on the wrong side of the bed, uh, and you'll remember that yeah, dream, yeah, yeah, and you'll yeah. get up and mess up your whole day following what the devil planned. Uh, he coming yeah. back. Uh, on, oh, yeah, he coming back. He, he has not left us, trust me. Uh, so, so now, I'm getting ready to close, but, but, but we got to remember the desert times of our life. Mm. Jesus' desert time was a time that was taking him to come to the time where we cherish and we celebrate even on first Sunday. Yes, a time of remembrance. Hallelujah. Remembering what was done at Calvary's cross for all of us. Wow. Oh, yeah. For every one of us. Not just the Jew. Not just the Asian man. Not just the, the, the Latino. But the black man, the white. Every denomination, every race, every creed, every gender, that's what Jesus done at Calvary uh -huh. for us. Yeah. Uh -huh. Remembering is critical and crucial for uh -huh. our growth, y'all. If you don't remember, mm -hmm. you will forget. If you don't remember, yeah. everybody remembers the community drunk, don't they? Mm -hmm. Y'all remember on Andy Griffin? Who was a community drunk? Otis. Y'all remember that, right? Yeah. And everybody in the community would always talk about Otis. Yeah. But see, let me share something with y'all. We had this conversation a few months ago. On the Andy Griffin show, uh -huh. everybody was single. Mm -hmm. no. Had a boyfriend or had a girlfriend. We don't know what Aunt B was because she was just Aunt B. But, but, but we never saw the mates to any of these folks. But the only one that had a wife was Otis. The drunk that everybody talked about, yeah. he had a wife. Yeah. They remember Ernest C because he was always destroying people's property, breaking, breaking windows with rocks. But see now, through that, the community remember Otis, 
and they talked about Otis. But Otis was the only one married. He wasn't fornicating. Yeah. He wasn't committing adultery. Yeah. He had a wife. That's right. But then Otis had a time of remembrance too. Because well. Otis remember when he's walking down Mayberry, he had too much to drink. Maybe couldn't walk home or couldn't drive home. He remembered that old jail cell over there. <laughs> and he'd just go <laughs> and open the door himself and go to jail. <laughs> That's what he did. He could remember his desert times, but he remembered there was a safe haven well, over there on, in Mayberry man. Jail. So I want y'all to understand right now today that, that I'm going to remember when I didn't have two nickels to rub together. Yeah. I'm going to never forget that God places everything in my life according to his glory. I'm going to remember that there were times that I lived in a house as a child that had outdoor plumbing. Yeah, we went outdoor to go to the bathroom. We went outside to draw the water. We washed clothes out there in the, in the washing machine. I, I'm going to remember the desert time so that I don't get so fixated on what I got now that I forgot what I came from. But I tell y'all today, y'all need to remember your desert times. I remember when I was sick with cancer and the doctor said, 40% chance with all of this stuff here, you only got 40%. But uh -huh. I remember that so that I can continue to minister people that are going through uh -huh. sickness right now. Uh -huh. That God is able, uh -huh. if it's his will and his uh -huh. desire to bring you up, Thank he you. will bring you up. But see, too much is given, much is required because uh -huh. when he healed this body, I couldn't just sit on it, folks. I had to tell him his goodness. Yeah. I had to tell somebody else, this is what God does. Yeah. Not Jeanette. This is what God does. So I tell you, if you remember your desert times when you were shaking in your boots about your finances, when you were shaking because your loved one was gone, is man, you I don't know how I'm gonna make it to the next day. You trust God. That's right. Woo, glory yeah, to God. Lord, Lord. Trust God. Lord, He'll be your husband, yeah. women. He'll be your wife, men. He'll be your, your sister and your brother when your sister and the brother act crazy. Because yeah. we can get crazy as a people. Yeah. But God, ah. hallelujah, a time of remembrance. Thank you. That's who he is in our lives. He's our savior. He's, savior. He's our keeper. <laughs> he heals our minds. He uh -huh. restores our thoughts. He gives us good thoughts. He brings humility, but we got to want it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We just got to want it. And, and I, I, I pray that you all want and desire more of him than you do yourself. Yes, I love Deke real good. Oh. He know it. My children know it. Yeah. And nothing I wouldn't do for Deke. Yeah. But Deke also know mm. there's an understanding between us and our relationship that God comes first. See? Yeah. See, God comes first. Right. And, and God is first in his life because when God is first in a couple's life, guess what happens? You will never neglect one another <laughs> because you know that God is at the head. And he prepares your spirit to be in the same accord. Yeah. It doesn't mean you're going to always agree with one another. Trust me on that one. Yeah. You won't always agree, but you can agree to disagree and walk away not angry. Y'all yeah. heard what I'm saying? Yeah. You remember when you yeah. were not in Christ Jesus, uh -huh. and, and you remember how you used to argue, the fuss, and fight, and cuss, and throw out the, throw out the dishes, and di oh, I... Let me tell you, y'all, I'm talking to plain folk because I'm a plain folk. I remember one time I got so mad because they wouldn't wash dishes. I don't know if Ness and Gary was still home or not. I got so mad I had a dishwasher. They wouldn't even put me in the dishwasher. I took the dishes out the, out the, out the uh, cabinet and threw them in the floor. I broke them. I said, well, they won't wash dishes. They won't do this. I throw them all away. Y'all see the foolish stuff we do when we're we not in Christ Jesus. Uh. I didn't harm my husband, I didn't harm my children, but I tore the heck out of them dishes because I was tired of it. But thank God Almighty. I, love See, I can I remember my desert times, y'all. I can remember my desert time. Yes. Yeah, y'all passed them, cheaping off yeah. the chain a time or two. Yeah. But God Almighty is a deliverer of the mind, hallelujah, the spirit, mm -hmm. and everything that's not pleasing to him. Thank God, Almighty. God, we thank you, Lord, yes, sir. for this day. We thank you, God, 
Oh, for our, your son, Jesus, God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, God, that abides in us, God. We thank you for that keeping power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, that it is written that you said in your word that we are to worship no one but you, that, 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 that it is written that worship, we will worship the Lord our God and serve him only. Mm-hmm. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I think as we prepare to go into this season and we're in this season of Lent leading to, to resurrection of, of your son, God, that, that we are preparing to be a better people, Lord God. We're preparing to, to hear your word, study your word, and have fellowship with your word, God, yeah. so that when the time comes and the enemy is, is going to tilt us, because we know that too much is given, much is required. We know that many are the affliction of the righteous, but because your word says you are able, yeah. hallelujah, able yeah. to bring us through all of those trials and tribulations, that's where we get our joy from this morning, God. I pray, God, that you will allow your people, God, to, to, to be messengers on today, God. Yeah. They will rejoice and revile in, in the goodness that you've done. Nothing that I've done, God, but only you, God, because I remember my times of desertness, God, and my, mm. my, my wilderness experiences, God. And, and I pray, God, for those that are going through wilderness, desert experiences this time right now, God, that they will just yeah. hold on and trust you a little longer and a yeah. little further, God, yeah. even if they will reach out to someone that they know yeah. that's a little strong in their faith than they are, God, that yeah. they will reach out, God, and hear a word, yeah. hear a word and be healed and, yeah. and be, be confident and have peace, God, yeah. through your word. We just give you glory, God. I just praise your holy name, God, for it's in you. Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Get God in the praise.